Hey guys, in this particular video I'm going to solve a pretty simple dynamics problem, which really just utilizes the formula I derived in the previous circular motion video. Alright, so here's the particular problem. Firstly, if this is point B, right here at the very top of our hill, my question to you is, what is the normal force acting on our block? What is the normal force acting on our block at the top of the hill if our block is traveling at a velocity of 3 meters per second? Right? So that's the first question. And the second question is, and this is a completely separate question, what is the velocity, the minimum velocity, that needs to be reached at point A in order for the block to lose contact with the surface? Right? So, so it'll be interesting to see how you could calculate that by introducing some type of mathematical kind of like um, a condition there. But regardless, those are the two questions. Let's see if we can get started. Right, well first, let's recall what formula we derived in our previous video. Well, we, if you recall, it shows that I showed that the acceleration of a particle traveling in a circular orbit, and it has to be circular, right, is going to be equal to um, r alpha in the tangential direction, r alpha in the tangential direction, so multiplied by your unit vector et, plus v squared on r, where v is just the magnitude of your velocity vector, and r is the radius of your circle, in your normal direction, en. And you recall, in my video, I said the normal direction was the direction pointing towards the inside of your circle, towards the midpoint of your circle, right? So that's en right here. Um, and if, if this formula makes no sense to you at this point, I definitely recommend you hit up the video I created before this. Okay, well, um, let's get started. Let's, let's start with question a. Right? And remember, every single dynamics problem always begins with a free body diagram. So let's do that. What is, a free, what is our free body diagram in this particular case? Well, here it is. Here's our circular hilltop. And only the top is circular, so I'll only draw that. And this is our block sitting at the very top of our hilltop right here. This is our block sitting at the very top of our hilltop. What are the forces acting on our object? Well, you'll have one force due to gravity trying to push the block down. Magnitude mg. But as a result, because the block is touching the surface, you'll have a reactionary force in the normal direction, NB, right? And, and I, I've got N subscript B to denote the normal force at point B, right? Okay, well, if these are, these are two forces acting on, on your block, are there any others? Well, we're going to disregard friction in this particular case, but if we didn't, that would just be a force in the tangential direction, right? So, so that's, that's all we're going to consider at this point. Right, let's see if we can solve this problem by implementing the formula above. Right? And in order to do that, let's let's recall first Newton's law, which says that the sum of forces, the sum of forces acting on an object, the sum of forces acting on an object is going to equal to the mass of that object times by the acceleration of that object. Alright, and this could be in any direction. Right? Con consequently, we can split this into two, different co into two different types of directions. We can split this into the tangential and normal direction, right? So in other words, we could say that the sum of forces, the sum of forces in our tangential direction is going to equal to the mass of our object times by the acceleration of our object in the tangential component. So recall that this right here is just going to be our scalar at, and this right here is going to be your scalar a n. Okay, well, um, let's see if, if there's anything else we can get. Well, we know that the sum of forces acting on our object in the normal direction is going to be equal to the mass of our object timed our, times our acceleration in our normal direction, right? Anything else? Well, not really, but we can actually, um, so we can actually substitute our values for a t and a n now, right? But first of all, before we do that, let's see if we can solve for what our sum of forces in our tangential direction are and our sum of forces in our normal direction. Well, based off our free body diagram and noticing that our, 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 our coordinate system in this particular case will be looking something like this. This will be our, sorry, it won't look like that, it'll look like this. That'll be, it'll look like that. That'll be our tangential direction and that'll be our normal direction facing towards the inner point of the circle, right? So given that, um, what, what are our force, what's the sum of forces in our, in our tangential direction? Well, there's none, right? Neither the normal force nor our force due to gravity can be expressed in our tangential direction at this point, right? So this is going to be zero, time is, and that's going to be equal to the mass of your object times by the acceleration of your object at um, point B, right? Which is just going to be R alpha, right? Because this right here is AT, 
and this is at so I've just substituted it in for you so we can we can what we can do now is we can divide both sides by mr and get alpha alpha is equal to zero right well this shouldn't be too surprising for you at this point I mean and and it's not particularly useful but I think it's it's I think it's really important to learn how to derive these formulas by applying this formula um, thoroughly um, fully and thoroughly okay um, now that we've got that sorted and I'll just draw a box around that right let's see if we can figure out what this can amount to right here <clears throat> what are the sum of forces in our normal direction well in our normal direction we're gonna have mg and then now negative normal direction we're gonna have n so it'll be mg minus nb right and it has to be that way around is gonna be equal to your mass times your acceleration in your normal direction which is your speed of your object squared divided by the radius of your circle squared All right okay well this becomes a matter of algebra right in order to solve for NB and I'm sure by now we're all pretty familiar with our algebra so I'll just rush through it that would mean that your normal force at point B is going to be equal to mg minus mv squared on R mv squared on R and I really want to keep proper notation here so I'll keep on writing the magnitude of our velocity vector right there all right well th this 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 all this really boils down to now that I've generalized this equation is subbing in values right so if, if I were to just substitute values in here right all I need to say is that our mass is 2 meters so this will be 2 times 9.81 minus 2 times well what's our velocity I think the question said yeah it's 3 meters per second so it'll be 2 times 9.81 minus 2 times 9 divided by 10 right which means that our answer will be 17.82 and of course our units will be in newtons because our normal force is well it's a force so it'll and because all values are in SI units we'll be dealing with newtons all right well that's that's our answer for part a I'm contemplating whether I should end this video and do part B in another video but I think I've got enough time to rush through part B now okay so now that part A is sorted let's see if we can do part B and remember this is going to be no different first thing we're going to do is a free body diagram this is going to be our object right here at point A let me just draw it this will be our object at point A right there and this will be our radius of our circle and this is also our radius of our circle and theta is the angle from the vertical right all right well what what's what's going to be our free body diagram at this point well we're still gonna have gravity it'll be acting vertically downwards right mg but our normal force will be acting perpendicular to the path so it's not going to be vertically upwards this time it's going to be in this direction and that's going to be na your normal force at point a right and applying these formulas is going to be no different we can say that the sum of forces in our tangential direction and our tangential direction is going to be m times your acceleration in your tangential direction because it's still a circular path right and the sum of forces in your normal direction is going to be m times a n right the only thing that's changed is the way your axis actually looks so it before it, it, it looked very similar to an xy axis but here this will be your tangential um, part of your axis and this will be your normal axis right here right so let me draw that in this will be t your tangential part of your axis and this will be n right so in order to solve this particular problem we need to break down our force due to gravity in both our tangential and normal components so let's do that let's do that below right so this is this is our force due to gravity right here and I've, I've drawn an extra large so you can see right this is going to be our component of our gravity in the normal direction it'll be roughly that big right roughly that big and this will be our component of gravity in our tangential direction right notice that it makes a right angle triangle and this is something we've had plenty of practice with before right fantastic well we also know that this angle right here is going to be theta right implying that this angle right here let me draw it this angle right here is 90 minus theta implying that this angle is theta and because the magnitude of our force vector is mg that means that this magnitude in our normal direction is going to be mg cosine theta cosine theta meaning that this is going to be mg sine theta sine theta 
All right. Well, let's see if we can solve this any further. Right. Well, what's going to be the sum of forces in our tangential direction? How can we simplify this left-hand side of our first equation? Well, there's only going to be one force acting in the tangential direction, isn't there? And that's going to be the component of gravity in our tangential direction. And that's going to be minus mg sine theta. Sine theta is going to be equal to is going to be equal to your mass times your acceleration in your tangential direction, which is r alpha or alpha r, as I've written it, implying that alpha now at point A at point A is going to be equal to minus g sine theta on r, sine theta on r. Right. So that's going to be your angular acceleration. And, and this is a surprisingly useless formula for solving our particular problem. But I really wanted to hammer down that you can derive formulas like this based off our problem. right? Now, now that we've done that formula, we've explored that formula till it's dead end, let's see if we can explore this formula now. Well, what are the formulas in our normal direction? We're going to have our component of gravity in our normal direction, which is going to be mg, mg cosine theta cosine theta times by sorry minus minus n a minus n a because this is our component acting towards the normal and this is our component and this is our forces acting away from our normal direction all right and that's going to be equal to m a n right and if we were to simplify out the right hand side that'll just be m v squared m v squared on r right well, let me just write out the left-hand side so I don't confuse you. mg cosine theta, cosine theta minus your normal force at point A is going to be equal to that. Okay, now let's talk about a mathematical condition that must be had in order for the block to leave the surface, right? And and let's think about this. What does it mean for the block to leave the surface? Well, let, let's think. The normal force is just a reactionary force that needs to be accounted for if the block is touching the ground, right? So if the block isn't touching the ground, that means the normal force will be zero, right? I hope that makes sense. So basically, if, if our normal force at point A, if our normal force at point A is zero, that means our velocity is just high enough for the block to just leave the ground. And I say just because this is really just like a, 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 a lower limit for what the velocity must be in order for the block to leave the ground. Okay, well, let's explore this, this condition a little bit further. So if Na, NA is equal to zero, that means block, actually, let me do, therefore, block, block leaves ground, leaves ground. It's kind of pidgin English, but this is how a lot of mathematicians talk, ground. Okay, well, um, let's let's explore this a little bit further, and let me just block off that. So that would imply then that mg cosine theta cosine theta is going to be equal to m v squared m v squared on r, right? So all this becomes a matter of is just solving this equation to make v your subject, right? Then we can do that, and I'll do that in one step. Once I do this, so if we divide both sides by our mass, we get our velocity the magnitude of our velocity vector is going to be equal to, um, well, it will be rg cosine theta, cosine theta. And if we square root both sides, we're left with this. We're left with this, that our velocity, our minimum velocity that needs to be had in order for our block to leave the surface at point A has to be equal to this, right? And, and this is really important because now what we can do is we can, now that we've got a generalized solution, we can literally sub in the values because we know that r is equal to 10 and theta is equal to 20. So that's going to be the square root of 10 times 9.81 times by cosine 20, right? Which is just going to be equal to 9, 9.6 meters per second, right? So the magnitude of your velocity the magnitude of your velocity that needs to be reached in order for the block to leave the ground is 9.86 meters per second. And of course, it's going to be tangential to your path. So I could have also written that your velocity vector now, your velocity vector could also be written as 9.6 ET, ET 
meters per second. That basically says that it's in your tangential direction. It looks pretty confusing, but that's all that ET does. All right, it basically says it's in your tangential direction. All right, that's it, fellas. That was a fairly simple problem, but in the next video, I'm going to cover a slightly more challenging problem, which um, might involve a change in radius.